Hey everyone, it's uh, Munkin FTW here, and uh, welcome to my RST Masterclass uh, episode two. And uh, today we're going to focus on building a different type of roller coaster. So in the first episode, I very quickly went over what to avoid when making a realistic roller coaster. I showed you guys an example of a realistic B&M looping coaster, which is the one right here. And today we're going to focus on making an Intamin accelerator or an Intamin launch coaster because that's a very different type of roller coaster and it's some very different things you need to keep into consideration when building one. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to make our way over here so we have plenty of space. And for the Intamin accelerator, we're going to use the Hershey's Stormrunner. Now the Hershey's Stormrunner is literally a roller coaster that exists. They really named it the same thing. Um, it exists, of course, in Hershey Park and the coaster is, of course, called Storm Rudder. But this type of roller coaster allows us to make a really nice and cool Intamin launch coaster. So I, I call it an Intamin because this track layout and the company that built it is called Intamin. So that's why. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and make a roller coaster with this um, track. And I'll show you guys what is very different from this one to the B&M looping coaster that we made. So again, we're going to make a custom track and we can only select one type of uh, train, but that's fine. So let's go ahead and uh, build this. So um, yeah, um, something like here would be fine. And again, we're gonna follow some basic principles. So again, I want my station to be uh, not too high off the ground and not too long. So again, I will. I really prefer to make it like six pieces or five pieces long. You know, not too long, not too short. So there we go. Now. With um, this launch coaster, we don't have a chain lift. So normally we would go up with a chain, but this coaster doesn't have it. So instead, this coaster starts with a launch. Now, the launch of the roller coaster um, in this with this roller coaster section, um, the way it goes from zero to the top speed, which you can select, uh, it uses a launch section. If you would not build anything at all, so if we just build a straight track like this, and then let me just test the roller coaster, it would just instantly go to the top speed. So let's see if it works here. See, boom, it's just like that. So that's not really that realistic. Uh, this would give you a major whiplash. So we're gonna use these uh, pieces here to kind of extend the launch of this roller coaster. So, um, you know, something like this, maybe this is a little bit too long, but you know, for this example, uh, it doesn't really matter. So something like this, I think. So now we have a nice little section um, where the train kind of speeds up to our desired speed. So this is basically how we start. You know, we don't start with a lift hill like this one. We start with a launch section and we make sure that it's a decent amount of space. Can be shorter, can be longer, but something like this would be adequate. Okay, so where do we go from here? Well, we wanna go into some uh, either nice airtime hills, some inversions, and uh, a really cool feature about this roller coaster that's again unique to RCT3 is the fact that we can go from straight to vertical and as you can see this is a very smooth very um yeah very smooth type of way to go from um straight to to, to vertical and i want to build um what i really like to build is either a top hat so that is something like this where the roller coaster makes a 90 degree turn and it goes into this top hat right here so you know something like this or we can do it inverted and i think yeah, i'm gonna build an inverted one for now so here we go, we're um, gonna go uh, from straight to vertical. I'm gonna make a 90 degree turn and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, make a quarter loop here. And I also see that the uh, speed is a bit too fast, but we'll get to that. So here we have, again, you have a lot of options you can use. You can either decide to um, go back down. So you have kind of like this, um, almost like top thrill dragster, but then inverted. Um, you can make the top hat, like I said. Just make sure that the inversions um, aren't too crazy. So again, what I, what what would be really cool, and what would look really nice would be something like this, where I go here, and then I make like, uh, you know, a lot of zero G rolls, or just a lot of like diving loops and everything. Like, you know, if I do this, and then another one, you know, let me just make another one like this. So and another one. So th this is looks kind of cool. But again, this is not realistic. So we want to limit the way the inversions look. So um, I'm actually thinking about using a dive loop, which uh, makes the track go diagonal. And then I want to go down. Mm, but let's see here. Yeah, I want to go all the way down, but not quite, because if I do it like this, I'm going to hit the roller coaster. This is not, this doesn't work. And I'm going to take my time to already adjust the speed. So this, you know, if you can see, it goes to the top. This is way too fast. So we want to avoid this. 
So we're going to slow it down to maybe, I don't know, 70. Let's try 70 miles an hour. Maybe this is a bit better. I'm not sure if it already changes to 70. Let's see here. That's actually not too bad. Maybe a little bit too slow, but I can tweak it a bit. So from here on out, we can, uh, again, we, we can kind of choose what we want. We can either make another of these dive loops here, you know, something like this. Um, we can decide to go into a quarter loop and then go back down again. So something like this would also work, you know, something like this where it goes back. And then, you know, we can make an airtime hill maybe like this. And then maybe into a break section and we turn around. So this would actually kind of work. But to me, this is a little bit too short. I mean, it, it's perfectly viable. But I'm thinking actually making something. Let's see here. So I want to make sure that we go. Yeah, I want a zero G roll right here. And then into a snake dive. Yeah, that would be really cool like this. And let's see if I can then. Yeah, so I, I kind of like this design here. So we have a first inversion here. We have a nice little turnaround element. Then we go into a zero G roll, which also is very nice. Into this uh, snake dive loop, flying snake dive. And then let's see if we can kind of, uh, would this work? No, that's too low. And I think this might be too slow for the roller coaster to pass over because this actually would kind of work. Let's see here if this works. Hmm. Let's see. So this act no, actually it does kind of work. Um, but there's a problem. So I kind of want to stop the roller coaster here. Let's see here if I can turn it around. So this would work. You see this kind of uh, this kind of would work. But the problem is now I have no brake section to slow down the roller coaster. So it's nice, but it doesn't really work that well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this drop a little bit shorter. So let's just go ahead and go back to this right here. And then here, I think this might work into that snake dive I had in mind. Then we go oh, back up again into another dive loop. Oh, wait, no, I need to use one more section of steep into this. Um, wait a minute, might this work? One, one second, I'm just going to check out to see if this would work. Nah, it's okay. This, this looked kind of cool, but forget it. Let's not make it too complicated for now. So let's go ahead and uh, do like this. Okay, this would actually work. So from here now, I'm going to make uh, a break section. Do, 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 do. Make sure it kind of slows down. We have a decent amount of them. And then we kind of turn around. And then another few breaks. There we go. Actually, this would work. So let's see here. Let's follow the train and see if this kind of looks realistic. So, oh wait, it has to be. Okay, here we go into the launch. And then it goes up into our first reversion, which is kind of like a reverse top hat with a dive loop. And then it goes into this zero G roll, into a snake dive into another dive loop and it goes down using that very smooth transition brake run. Uh, that's okay ish. I'm going to extend it a little bit, just a little bit because I don't want to have too many straight pieces here. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and I think this would be okay. And then a few straight pieces. Yeah, because unfortunately, if I make an airtime hill here, we're just going to go. Actually, let me try that. Actually, let me just go ahead and um, can I make this and then this? No, that's too low, unfortunately. So I'm still going to have to use this one. What if I just make an airtime hill here? And then into final swooping turn. Yeah, but the problem is then here. And I think this small airtime hill might not work, but let's see. Let's see. So maybe this would work. So it goes here into a final airtime hill because this, do this does look kind of cool. Then it goes into a corner, into a final kind of 
airtime heal and then it slows down i mean this would work yeah actually i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and do this so we're gonna go ahead and extend this a little bit with a few straight pieces again I, like i said before you want to avoid straight pieces but one or two is okay so we're just going to go ahead and make that airtime heal and again i'm going to use a straight piece here into a fast turn into a final one that's a bit more a bit higher because this would be kind of okay-ish and then into yeah so this one i'm not a huge fan of this but this one i would actually work Fortunately, I can't make a really sm smooth airtime hill here, but this this kind of works. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. So um, yeah, this actually looks like a pretty nice little uh, intimate launch coaster. And uh, let me just go over the principles that we used to design this. So first of all, because I know I was kind of um, building this off the cuff, so I'm also thinking to myself, hmm, is this realistic or not? So first of all, we have our station. And actually, I think if I make it a little bit longer or shorter, I can fit two trains here which would be kind of nice. So I can actually do it like this, you know, four trains, uh, four, a train with four cars. So we started with our station, not too long, not too short, also close to the ground. Then we have our launch section, which kind of allows the train to speed up, not too fast, but also not too slow. So we also made sure it's not super, super long. Then we go into our first inversion. And again, the whole idea of this type of roller coaster is that it's kind of short, kind of fast, with a few inversions, not too many. Um, and yeah, that's kind of the design philosophy that we're following here. So we go up using this very smooth piece that goes from straight to vertical. Um, we make a 90 degree turn. Again, you don't have to, but I decided to do it into this kind of reverse top hat, if you will. Um, and I use a dive loop and I go up again into a nice zero G roll um, into a snake dive. And again, I checked always to see if the train goes through here, not too slow, not too fast. Then into a second or a third dive loop or a second one. And then we go back down again into an airtime hill. We turn around and then we have a final airtime hill, which is not the greatest, but you know, it is what it is. Again, you know, with RCT3 due to the limited uh, track design, you can't have everything. And then into a, um, a break run and then we're finally there. So uh, yeah, this actually looks kind of nice. We have plenty of space also for a queue and the exit. And um, I think it looks pretty cool. So let's go ahead and write this and see what it looks like. So here we go. Ready to make that launch. Here we go. Yeah, that's a pretty good pace on uh, how it uh, accelerates into the dive loop. Very nice, not too fast, not too slow. Into that nice zero G roll. You got a snake dive here into another dive loop. And we go down. And there we go, into an airtime hill, into a quick corner, and then this kind of not too smooth airtime hill, but you know, it works. Hmm. This actually kind of works. Actually, what I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna use some uh, brakes here to slow down the train a little bit more. Um, and this is actually kind of realistic because a lot of roller coasters sometimes have uh, small brake sections in between to kind of slow down the roller coaster a little bit. So I'm gonna use that as well to see if it actually kind of works to um, decrease the momentum. So let's see if this kind of works here. Actually that kind of works. So nice little airtime heel into the final section. Yeah, there we go. Nice, okay, that's pretty good. So I used a few brakes to slow down the train a little bit more. Top speed of 70. And what are, our there we go, that's very nice. We got a seven, a seven and a 5.71. So high nausea, but not anything crazy. So um, yeah, that's actually a nice little uh, intimate accelerator or launch coaster. And um, hope you get, hope this was clear. Again, that uh, follows a, a pretty simple uh, track design, meaning we got a launch, a few inversions, it's not too short. It's also, it's not, it's not too long like the other coaster we're building. And um, yeah, we're making sure that it, uh, the speed is not too much, but also not too little. And um, again, like every single roller coaster, we have a brake section at the end. And as you can see, this is vastly different than the B&M looping coaster that we made. So that's why, that's exactly why I want to show you guys a few roller coaster or a few examples of roller coasters. So um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much the uh, end of this episode. 
we'll go. Uh, we'll have one more episode where I show you guys um, one more example of a design that's you know a little bit different than these two. And uh, from there on out, we'll start focusing on the surroundings and everything that's kind of, you know, that surrounds the roller coaster, if you will. Because while the track layout is very nice, it, you know, it's all plain black, it has these standard supports, you know, there's nothing but grass, there's no queue, there's no exit. So, of course, this is, uh, this needs a lot of work still. But for now, um, this is it. This is kind of how to make a realistic Intamin launch coaster. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in episode three, where we'll make one final roller coaster. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you guys learned something about uh, this video. And uh, I'll see you again uh, next time. And uh, until then, I wish you guys a wonderful day. Thanks for watching.